Hi, as you can see, I'm not filming out in the open air today, neither does this look like my house, so who wouldn't want one of these in their house, right? That's because today's video is coming your way from the gym, of course, and it's actually been inspired by a personal struggle of mine, which is keeping fit and healthy during the cold and dark winter months. Now, I realize I'm no expert when it comes to fitness, but joining us today is Andrew Daly, one of the best fitness instructors you'll find in all of Dublin with 15 years worth of experience to make sure we get you the best health and fitness advice for this video. Don't forget to give the video a big like on YouTube. And why just stop there? Why not subscribe to the channel? It costs you nothing. And click on the bell sign for regular video notifications. Stick around to the end of the video because we're going to be doing some exercise demos to make sure you stay fit, trim, and looking fabulous Excellent. during the Christmas season. Keep watching. It's great to work out to look good, but what are the other benefits of working out? Yeah, it's a funny thing in Ireland because it's it's not really a country you get the opportunity to ground your short off fairly often. So uh, it's funny people being obsessed with the cosmetic benefits yeah. of it. So going along the lines you're going, I mean, we have obviously the physical health benefits, which are that you're going to gain more energy from walking out, always. Yeah. It's one of those things where you do have to spend a little bit of energy to gain more. A lot of people think that they'll be more energetic by resting maybe only when they go home. Yeah. But instead by getting up and maybe doing a 20 to 30 minute workout, you're going to get that gain, but it does take that initial effort in getting okay. out there and having to spend it a little. The other benefit is that you're going to be helping not only your physical function, but your cognitive function. Exercise, um, uh, it encourages blood flow in general, so you're not just talking about making muscles better at what they do, yeah. you're not just talking about making your heart better, you're talking about increasing blood flow to your brain. Your brain, like any body part, it, it needs blood to function, so increasing blood flow to your brain makes you smarter, it's going to make you more wakeful when you're awake. Yeah. Your memory is going to be better. And generally, you'll probably be better at what you do. Yeah, because there's links to neuroplasticity. So That's the right. cognitive function of your brain linked with you know, just cardiovascular exercise. That's right. In fact, there was a study by the University of British Columbia that actually showed that doing regular cardiovascular exercise helped increase the size of the hippocampus. So it boosts the hippocampus, which is the area of the brain that's linked with verbal memory mm -hmm. and also learning. So basically, it helps your learning capacity and your eloquency. It does. Th there's a general attitude that often goes with people that exercise though as well, and that's one of determination. Mm -hmm. They get up, they go, they take care of business. Now this can also translate over into your mentality about what you do cognitively that's as well. Focus that focus, that determination, even when it comes to just processing problems. Mm -hmm. You're not just training your physical and mental capacities, I suppose you're also training your psychological capacities. You're training your persistence and determination when you exercise. Mm -hmm. This is why it's such a big part of military training. Yeah. It's not just about how fit you are, but it's also about the attitude that you cultivate yeah. when you're exercising. Fantastic. Let's talk a little bit about hormone balance, um, because you know a lot of people suffer with that during the winter, of course we have less daylight, there's the whole issue with like SAD, uh, seasonal affective exactly. disorder, yeah. In terms of what they say, happy hormones for instance, so endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, yes, yeah. yeah. um, that helps, that's obviously released after a workout and during a workout. It is, um, generally when we're dealing with stress, stress is not something that we should never have, but mm. the body is designed to deal with it on short term periods. Mm. So. It would make sense that if we put our body under a stressor for a short period of time, the body is expecting to feel relief afterwards, to feel some happiness, because usually when the stressor ends, mm -hmm. there's relief, as in if you were being chased by a wild animal maybe in ancient times, or you were being attacked by somebody, yeah. generally relief usually follows that. So it can be a good way of maybe fooling your body into thinking that's what's coming. But Along the lines, what we're talking about is also that you're training your body to adapt to stress. Mm. By putting a stressor into place, very potent for a short period of time, you're training your body's ability to adapt, and then you're giving it that time to adapt afterwards. So the natural outgrowth of that is your feel-good hormones, like your serotonin, dopamine, 
and uh, adrenaline even to a degree. So you're really cultivating a mentality and a physicality that can deal with stress by um, exposing it to it. Just lastly then, immunity in terms of your immune system. Obviously this is cold and flu season. Yes. Um, are we going to get some benefits when it comes to that part? Yes, th this is one that relies a little bit more on balance because mm. it's not uh, going along the rule that you could do more and always gain more. Mm. Again, we talked about the short-term duration of the stressor and that we can adapt to a short-term duration, even if it is of a very high intensity. So by keeping it to uh, a limited enough period of time and allowing enough recovery mm. and the right kind of recovery, yeah. you're going to be optimizing not only your energy, your cognition, your mood, but you're also going to be optimizing your immunity as well. But finding that balance is very important. How often do you need to work out to gain these benefits? Um, we're talking about specificity of benefits. I know a lot of big organizations like the American Heart Foundation and even the Irish one they talk about doing maybe five days a week, save off uh, heart disease and cardiovascular diseases. Okay. Now, I think generally the time guidelines are good ones, but what we will talk about here in order to optimize our health would be again, maybe to increase the intensity of the stress a little bit more. So maybe some of the powerful, fast body weight movements combined with some core work to test our strength and that. Again, we don't have to do it for a terribly long period of time, but upping the intensity is going to give us a lot of the benefits that we were discussing a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. So I would say maybe those five days a week is not a bad idea, maybe 30 minutes a session, but drive the heart rate up a little bit higher to where we have a little bit of shortness of breath, which is a good thing. Yeah. You need a stressor to adapt to, and where we feel good blood flow and a good high rate like of heart. Like training, for instance. Hit training. Hit yeah. training is the word in the industry at the moment. Yeah. So when we're talking about hit training, we're talking about high intensity interval training. We train at a high intensity, we train with intervals, and then of course it's training, which is an obvious one. So we would use some exercises put back to back with very little rest in between. Okay. We could total maybe three or four and then take about a minute's rest in between. And we're gonna be staying in that anaerobic zone that I talked about earlier where we're out of breath and our heart is working hard. And have a look at your squat form. Okay. So when you do a squat, we're gonna place our feet about the width of our shoulders and we're gonna turn them out very slightly, just like this. We want our arms up about here, or we can even cross our elbows just to keep them out of the way. So, like you, I'm going to have my arms out in front. We're going to drop our bum back and down like we would sit down onto a chair. And while we do, we're breathing in. Keep your head up. As we breathe out, we come back up. Okay. Again, we break at the hips first. We're going to go progressively deeper because it's important that we're able to squat low. Up we come. So it's like how low can you go? Can pretty you go? much, pretty much, as long as our heels stay on the ground. We're talking about getting some great work here, not only for our core, which is our middle, but also our legs and our glutes and our lower back. So we train some of the biggest and strongest muscles in the body. Now Beverly's doing a pretty good job there. Our balance is pretty good. Our depth is good and our posture is good. And that's really important. She's guiding that by keeping her head up, which is often an initiator for the rest of the postural points. And how many of these should we be doing? So let's say we get Beverly to do about 12, maybe 15 reps. So we give you a range rather than a very specific number. You can work within that range depending on your fitness and endurance. Now we can see it's starting to get tougher, so I'm gonna let her finish with the squat right there. So that's our first exercise. You know, we could couple that with the mountain climber. So instead of training one muscle after another in a row, our high intensity interval session is going to involve changing muscle groups. And we might repeat some of them, but we won't do them continuously. So our next exercise, I call the mount climber. We're gonna get down on the floor in a uh, push-up position. Here, I want my back to be straight. I don't want my hips to sag like a rope bridge. I want to come up, and already my core is engaged. I've got the width of my shoulders between my feet here, so you can see Beverly does as well. We're gonna bring our knee up, and we can breathe out when we do that. We put the foot back on the floor, we bring the other knee up, and we start to get into a bit of a rhythm. Now the faster we go, exchanging feet quickly, we're talking about doing more concentric contractions for our core, but it's also bracing and so is our posture. We continue this for about 20 seconds to get a reasonably good interval. We don't want everybody to hold our breath, but she wants to breathe a little bit. So let's count four, three, two, one, and you can place your knees back on the floor and that brings the exercise to a close. So that's our core training. Now continuing along the line of training our core a little bit, but introducing a little bit of upper body work now, we're going to do a push-up. 
So they can be exactly the same width, but slightly wider means slightly stronger. For those of you who cannot do a full push-up, I put my knees on the floor, cross the ankles. Okay. Okay. Now after that, we want to brace our core so that again, our hips do not sag down near the floor. So this is core work as well as upper body. You want to be fairly measured about how low you descend and breathe in when you do it. Now I can go all the way down, but if Beverly has to, she can go halfway down. We're going to draw it back up and it's important that we breathe out on the way up. It's important that you don't hold your breath the whole time. And we're going to continue. Pushing a few reps out, we're working the chest, the shoulders, the upper arms here, the tricep. I'm going to get Beverly to do three more. Now again, we could work in that range of about 12 to 15 reps, and we're going to be training our endurance there, not only muscular, but cardiovascular, because the heart and lungs are starting to work pretty hard now. So let's call that the last one. Tough, Beverly? Yeah. Okay, good. We've got about three exercises back to back now. Now to get into that testing zone that I was talking about, we're going to add on one more, okay. and it is going to be the plank. We consider the plank very, very basic but also really functional because a lot of what we do to train our core, which is what the plank is for, yeah. involves bracing instead of constant movement. So to do the plank, I'm gonna place my elbows on the floor. I start with my knees on the floor for now. My feet are about shoulder width apart. And when I bring my knees off the floor, it's very important that my lower back is straight and does not have any kind of an exaggerated curve in it. So. Beverly's up in the plank position now, and as you can see, her lower back is reasonably straight, which is what we want. It's, impor it's important to keep that straight line in order that the core is still working hard. If the lower back starts to sag and curve, our stomach muscles are starting to fail a little bit. That's inevitable. Four exercises back to back. And would we finish it off with a side plank? If you want to train the obliques right here in the side of the core, we could add in the side plank. So we've got our elbow here on the floor. I'm going to stack my feet so that they're side by side and initially my knees are stacked as well. I'm going to place my arm here. Now, by putting my arm on my side, this is actually a more difficult version than what some people think is more difficult. You're taking the weight of your arm on your core. Here, it's free from that. So this, slightly easier, even though it's more animated looking, right here, <laughs> taking more weight. Now, a little bit of shaking is no harm. There's muscular tension involved, shaking comes with it sometimes. Breathe. Doesn't have to be the deepest breathing in the world. And if you can stay up there for about 20 seconds, we're doing some good work for the sides, our obliques, but then naturally we're gonna to have to do the other side as well. So you can either do that there and then, or you can do it on the next round of interval. Well, thanks very much for helping me. You're very today, welcome. Let's get back on our feet. And guys, if you're looking to reach out and you've got some questions, I'll leave a link in the description below for Andy's um, Facebook fitness page. It's Andy Daily Fitness. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Beverly. Cheers, guys.